Chocolatito, Roman Gonzalez, proved that there is still definitely some fight left in that little dog. He takes out Moises Fuentes in the fifth round with the knockout of the evening. It was better than, I think, Lemieux's knockout over Spike O'Sullivan. He absolutely cracked him with a right hand on the ropes. Fuentes was not ready for it. He was not prepared and he absolutely collapsed in a way which I really couldn't envision up till then because I thought there was a period again of Gonzalez being at this weight, super fly, not ideal for him. And I thought physically he was just trying to having to gut it out and dig it out a bit more than he would have back in the day at the lower weights. Um, Fuentes, much taller man than him, and he was having his own sustained periods of attacks as well, where he was trying to hurt this guy, trying to hurt the little chocolate he um, But then Choco was getting back to his beautiful fluid combinations, those great combinations that I think really did make him the pound for pound number one briefly. But when the knockout came, it was reminiscent of Rocky Marciano's knockout against Jersey Joe Wolcott. And that Wilcock got so blasted against Marciano back in the day because he went for right hand himself. And he committed to it and he went for the release. And at that point, you're not tensing up your jaw muscles. You're not trying to think defense. Fuentes did the same thing on the ropes. Very brutal. He was about to uncork a right hand himself. But Gonzalez was already three quarters of the way there. And boom. And he absolutely went. He'd absorbed similar punches than that before. But because of how he was caught and he wasn't ready, he just dropped like a sack of potatoes. And... I'm hoping, it's always good to see him get off the floor and he's fine with it, but I'm hoping that was somewhat cathartic for Chocolatito after getting so badly splattered against Rungvasai last time out and it really looked like he was done, he wasn't coming back, of course he's a lower weight fighter, they don't last as long and with him being in his 30s now and he had such a long period of time off, I was thinking, you know, it just looks like the guy's retired now, but no, he came back and he has, uh, he beats a guy he definitely should have been beating as uh, David Higa knocked him out in Japan, knocked out Fuentes in one round, I think, before that fight. It was a fight or the fight before. So Gonzalez, if if Gonzalez was ever going to continue with his career, had he lost that, it would have been game over. So he had to win that fight, and it was good to see him get rid of him. And I thought before that, he looked pretty good. As I say, there were some periods where his combinations were just starting to catch fire again, and we saw how he just has, Gonzalez has a great way, possibly his best talent, of being able to keep you at the end of just an extended combination. He'll hit you with a one, two, three, four punch combination, but then his little feet will catch up to you. He'll keep dinging you, keeping you in that range, and then he'll be off again. He's got a beautiful way of putting his punches together, just like a cascade of leather. It's pretty awesome to watch, but he's going to always find it harder to do at this higher weight because when you're a come forward pressure fighter, you have to rely somewhat on a physical presence to be able to make them feel that and then manipulate them in the ring of where you want them to go. Choco doesn't have that as much at this weight. We've seen it and you just look at someone like Fuentes. It seems everybody's bigger than him at this weight. When he fought Quadras, it was a real struggle, much bigger. And when people at this weight, 115 pounds superfly, very small. When people have a noticeable size advantage over you, when we're talking about guys this small, it is a problem. Gonzalez always seems to have a bit more water weight. He's not shredded, but onwards he goes. I still think he can make things happen with his talent, providing that his punch resistance hasn't gone too much. I love his style. I say I'll always watch him fight. It sounds like the rematch between him and Estrada could take place. Estrada wants it. I think he knows it will be a, probably a bit easier for him than fighting Rungvasai again who's just uh, kind of running wild a bit at the moment and is a real uh, steamroller. And I think he'd like to, of course, get revenge over Gonzalez and he feels being having a naturally bigger frame and Gonzalez probably having been knocked out so badly against Rungvisai that he can probably get the better of him now and outpoint him. As I've said before, ironically, I think that fight would make more money than a rematch between Estrada and Rungvisai, even though that one is more significant because you have the Nicaragua-Mexican rivalry. So I think that will still make more money. So I would like to see that happen, but I think Gonzalez would have to fight another person a bit of a higher level before rematching Estrada, who's at the top of his game at the moment. He could possibly fight Kalia Fai from Britain, who I think has the WBA super flyweight title. So that's an option for him. That's a connective road up to the uh, Estrada rematch. Uh, of course, Rungvasai might fight that Yerwin Anka has from the Philippines, who has the IBF strap, so that would take him out of the picture, and then you could concentrate Estrada. Um, it could be Estrada and Chocolatito, so I think that's the rematch to make in the future. I'm just happy to see Chocolatito back. I thought he wasn't going to come back after getting splat, so it was great to see him. I want to see those combinations flow again, and I think take one more warm-up fight, a bit of an intermediary, another top 10 guy on the lower scale, and then why not go for the Estrada rematch?